Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. Today we are filming on one of the outlying islands here in Hong Kong. And look how beautiful it is. Even though the weather is not great today, I still think it's uh, a great view and a great location for filming. Today's video is going to be about the 10 things that you can do when you're traveling to Hong Kong. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so if you're looking for a very inexpensive um, very central location to stay at when you're in Hong Kong you should probably go to Chongqing Mansion that's also where I stayed this time it's like a huge mall with a lot of inexpensive hotels and hostels a lot of backpackers stay there it's um, full of Middle Eastern salesmen and Indian salesmen and a lot of curry I think and kebab <laughs> And a lot of knockoffs and you can buy everything there but yeah it's a super great place to stay if uh, you just want to stay in the center and you don't have that much money to work with anyways today's video I'm also going to start from Chunki Mansion it's located on Nathan Road just besides the Chim Tha Sui, um subway station so from there you can go down to number one on this list which is the Chim Tha Sui promenade you can walk down there if you're going there during the weekends you can see how the locals are having markets and activities and playing around with their children and you can also go there to take some really stunning pictures of the Hong Kong island I tried my best but I'm telling you guys the last few days here in Hong Kong has been really bad like the Tianqi the weather was really really bad so I'm sorry for that but still if you come here on another day it might be better it will be better I've been here on a good day as well so just saying so you walk down there la 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 and then you walk straight to number two on our list today which is the star ferry you go into the star ferry station and then you buy a cheap ticket and then you just get on board sit down and you can watch the beauty of uh, Hong Kong Island coming towards you when you're sailing over there it takes like 10 minutes I think I'm looking up because my friend is here as well she knows more about Hong Kong than me <laughs> um, it takes approximately 10 minutes you can take some really beautiful pictures and then you end up on the other side which is uh, also central metro station so if you don't want to take the ferry you can also take the underground the metro towards uh, Hong Kong Island yes so number three on our list is on that side. From Central you can walk, if you have an offline map, you can just walk towards the Peak Tram Terminal. So you can walk to number three, Peak Tram Terminal, buy a ticket there, 45 Hong Kong dollars for a return ticket. And then you walk through this little introduction of the tram's history in Hong Kong. It's really cute. And then you get on the tram and it goes up, 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 up. I'm telling you guys, I was literally sitting like this the whole way. <laughs> I couldn't feel my back in the end. Um, it goes up like eight minutes or so. And then you end up at the terminus. You get out there and you can watch the beautiful Victoria Peak and uh, also the view of Hong Kong. Again, I tried to make a beautiful shot for you guys but it was horrific weather today so I'm sorry for that but I hope that it's gonna be better weather um, when you're going there so that's the tram up there you can also enjoy a cup of coffee have an ice cream whatever you feel like and then you can take the tram and back down again yes so number four on the list is to go for a ride with the old tram also called Ding Ding Tour here is that the Hong Kong word as well Ding Ding Tua, yeah, okay. In Mandarin, it's Ding Ding Tua uh, because it's making the sound Ding Ding. Um, it's really cute, another historical part of Hong Kong. I really, really love it. So uh, when you get down with uh, the peak tram to the end station, you can walk down to the main road. And I took the tram from uh, Petter Street Station. So you just jump onto it. You either pay with your Octopus card, swipe when you get in, or you pay cash uh, to 
2.40, I think I've been. Um, and then you can get on this little tram, it's really cute because you can pull down a window and you can take pictures and you can enjoy this historical part of Hong Kong. So you have been riding back and forth with the tram for many hours or maybe 10 minutes like I do. I have no patience for traveling. <laughs> um, and then you can get off. For me, I took it like two stops and then I saw this cute little market down in the alleyways between the big malls. It was really cool, so I got off there. You can also get off there. This is number five. Go down and do some shopping in the street markets, buy some souvenirs and some funny t-shirts and uh, colorful clothing, Chinese uh, clothes, whatever you feel like. And afterwards, you're probably hungry. So number six is to go down to the local restaurants and eat together with the locals. I did that. It was a loud restaurant and like locals everywhere. And I had some uh, Hong Kong milk tea and I had some noodles, some wonton. I felt I felt like I was living a, a local life for, for two minutes. So after all these activities, it's probably evening right so number seven on the list is the temple night market you can go down to uh, temple street and then you can go through the market and buy all the knockoffs that you need and want in your need in your life and uh, and then there you can also enjoy a local food again um, people are sitting outside on the street and you can eat on the street it's really nice after the market you will actually walk straight into um, the temple that's why it's called temple street there is a temple surprise it's a small park well not a park it's like a square and then there is a small temple it's closed in the night but it's very beautiful like light up with the with the lights and um, <laughs> the funny thing is that on the side of this square there are a lot of locals uh, so first you can go and check out the fortune tellers there maybe you want to know about your future love life I was a little curious I was actually thinking about going to check out who I'm gonna marry in like five years but <laughs> Uh, but then I didn't dare to anyways, but you can go there and have a look around and also you can see the locals playing their karaoke machines. Oh my god! <laughs> Maybe you should bring earphones though. So after you are done with fortune telling and karaoke singing, you should also have a look around for like local dessert. I went there to have some uh, mango ice cream and it was really, really cool. It, it tasted really delicious. Um, Ling Ling liked it, so you are probably gonna like it too, because I'm picky. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on to number eight, which should be on a separate day, because this one is a trip to one of the out lying right one of the outlying islands here because Hong Kong is not only the central like the shopping and the malls and la 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 there is actually a lot of nature here which is where we are at right now so I suggest number eight that you go to Lama Island or one of the other outlying islands here it's actually super easy because you just go down to Central Pier and this one is at Central Pier 4 and then you just pay for a ticket, you get onto the boat and 30 minutes later you arrived here and it's literally like another world. It doesn't say Hong Kong at all but it's also part of Hong Kong so I think it's great that you can explore this part as well. I actually didn't know about this before before my friend she took me here and I'm so happy that she did because it's an amazing local experience. Okay, uh, number nine is the Hong Kong History Museum. There are quite a few different Hong Kong museums here, but museums in Hong Kong. <laughs> but I really like history and I really loved it. Last time I went in there, it has a, it's a, great, it has a great way to tell the story of Hong Kong. So if you have time, you should definitely go and check that out. And there's also a local food street very close by. You can walk down and have your lunch afterwards. And then we have number 10, the last one on the list. You're probably thinking, why is Ling Ling not going shopping? Well, number 10 is shopping. If you're all in for international brands, they also have Topshop, Forever 21, and Gap, and everything else in between. So, whatever you feel like, there will be something for you here. 
those were the 10 things you could do here in Hong Kong or what I think you could do here suggestions for you to do here there we go uh, I hope you enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up for uh, this one and subscribe more videos from Ling Ling below and I hope you're having a great day evening wherever you are in the world and I'll see you again very very soon Ling Ling is out see ya and Saijian from Hong Kong Mwah. how to say bye bye how to say Saijian in uh, Hong Kong uh, Cantonese bye bye oh <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>